Good morning and welcome to another daily Gong Fu workout. Today we are going to build off of all of our hip circles we've been playing with the last three weeks and add in hip circles with stepping and try to build the coordination with these basic movements. We're also going to do a few minutes of Jenga because Capoeira is awesome. Um, three body problem will continue to play in the background. And if you have any questions, comments, or requests, let me know. Take care, everyone. Absolutely, Chief Wong. I'll give you an updated schedule right away. We can stop the reaction this afternoon. You can stop it right now. The lab director stared at him in disbelief, but soon he was excited again, as if afraid to lose this opportunity. He picked up the phone and issued the order to stop the reaction. All the exhausted researchers and technicians grew excited too. They immediately began the procedures to shut down the main reaction chamber, flipping a hundred complex switches. The various control screens became dark one after another. Until finally, the main screen reflected the main reaction chambers halted status. Almost simultaneously, the countdown before Wong's eyes also stopped. The final number was 1174-10-07. A few seconds later, the numbers flickered and disappeared. As the world re-emerged, free of the ghostly numbers, Wong let out a long breath as though he had just struggled up from underwater. He sat down, drained, and realized that others were still watching him. He turned to the lab director. System maintenance is the responsibility of the equipment division. Why don't all of you in the research group uh, take a break for a few days? I know everyone's been working hard. Chief Wong, you're tired too. And Chief Engineer Zong can take care of things here. Why don't you go home and rest as well? Yes, I am tired, Wong said. After the lab director left, he picked up the phone and dialed Shen Yufei's number. She picked up after one ring. Who or what is behind this? Wong asked. He tried to make his voice calm, but failed. Silence. What will happen? Web address: http: colon forward 
forward slash forward slash www.qsl.net forward slash bg3tt forward slash zl forward slash mesdm.htm. You got it open? Now print it out and keep it with you. Wong saw that the page was nothing more than a Morse code chart. I don't understand this. During the next two days, please find a place where you can observe the cosmic microwave background. For specifics, please check the email I'll send you. What? What are you going to do? I know that your nanomaterial project has been stopped. Do you plan on restarting it? Of course. Three days from now. Then the countdown will continue. At what scale will I see it? A long silence followed. This woman acting as the spokesperson for some force beyond <clears throat> human understanding right leg every exit Wong had external rotation three days from now that's the 14th between one and five in the morning the entire universe will flicker for you seven three body king wen of zo and the long night Wong dialed Ding Ying's number. Only when Ding picked up did he realize that it was already one in the morning. This is Wong Miao. I'm sorry to be calling so late. No problem. I can't sleep anyway. I've seen something, and I'd like your help. Do you know if there are any facilities in China that are observing the cosmic microwave background? Wong had the urge to talk to someone about what was going on. But he thought it best to not let too many people know about the countdown that only he could see. The cosmic microwave background? What made you interested in that? I guess you really have run into some problems. Have you been to see Yang Dong's mother yet? Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. No worries. By now, many scientists have seen something like you. Everyone's distracted. But I think it's still best if you go visit her. She's getting on in years, and she won't hire a caretaker. If there's some task around the home that she needs help with, please help her. Oh, right, the cosmic microwave background. You could ask Young's mother. Before she retired, she was an astrophysicist. She's very familiar with such facilities in China. Good. I'll go after work today. Then I'll thank you in advance. I really can't face anything that reminds me of Yong Dong again. Figure eights. After hanging up, Wong sat in front of his computer and printed out the simple Morse code chart. By now, he was calm enough to turn his thoughts away from the countdown. He pondered the frontiers of science, Shen Yufei, and the computer game she had been playing. The only thing he knew for certain about Shen was that she wasn't the type to enjoy computer games. She spoke like a telegraph and gave him the impression that she was always extremely cold. It wasn't the kind of coldness that some people put on like a mask. Hers suffused her all the way through. Wong subconsciously thought of her as the long obsolete DOS operating system. A blank black screen. A bare C colon backslash greater than prompt. A blinking cursor. Whatever you entered, it echoed back. Not one extra letter, and not a single change. But now he knew that behind the C colon backslash greater than was a bottomless abyss. Right leg, internal He's rotation. Was interested in a game? A game that requires a V-suit? She has no kids, which means she bought the V-suit for herself. Well, the very idea is preposterous. Wong entered the address for the game into the browser. It had been easy to memorize www.freebody.net The site indicated that the game only supported access via V-suit. Wong remembered that the employee lounge at the Nanotechnology Research Center had a V-suit. He left the now empty main lab and went to the security office to get the key. In the lounge, he passed the pool tables and the exercise machines and found the V-suit next to a computer. He struggled into the haptic feedback suit, put on the panoramic viewing helmet, and turned on the computer. After entering the game, Wong found himself in the middle of a desolate plain. At Left leg, in rotation. The plain was dun-colored, blurry. It
its details hard to make out. In the distance, there was a sliver of white light on the horizon. Twinkling stars covered the rest of the sky. There was a loud explosion, and two red glowing mountains crashed against the earth in the distance. The whole plain was bathed in red light. When the dust finally cleared from the sky, Wong saw two giant words erected between the sky and the earth. Three body. Next came a registration screen. Wong created the ID, Hiram, and logged in. The plane remained desolate, but now the compressors in the V-suit were to life, and Wong could feel gusts of cold air against his body. Before him appeared two walking figures, forming dark silhouettes against the dawn light. Wong ran after them. He saw that both figures were male. They were dressed Figure in eights. long robes full of holes, covered by dirty animal eyes. Each carried a short, wide, bronze sword. One of them carried a narrow wooden trunk that was as long as half his height. He turned around to look at Wong. The man's face was as dirty and wrinkled as the hide he wore, but his eyes were sharp and lively, the pupils glinting in the early morning glow. It's cold, he said. Yes, very cold. This is the warring states period. The man with the trunk on his back said, I am King Wen of Zo. I don't think King Wen belongs to the warring states period, Wong said. He survived until now, the other man said. King So of Shang is alive too. I am a follower of King Wen. Indeed, that's my login ID. Follower of King Wen of So. He's a genius, you know. My login ID is Hiram. All right, slicing. What are you carrying on your back? King Wen put down the rectangular trunk and stood it up vertically. He opened one of the sides like a door and revealed five compartments within. By the faint light, Wong could see that every layer held a small mound of sand. Every compartment seemed to have sand falling into it from the compartment above, through a small hole. A type of sand glass. Every eight hours, all the sand flows to the bottom. Flip it three times, and you can measure a day. But often I forget to flip it, and I need follower here to remind me. You seem to be on a very long journey. Adding in internal implication. Now it's stepping. This is a chaotic era. What is a chaotic era? Other than stable eras, all times are chaotic eras. King Wen answered the way he would have spoken to an ignorant child. Indeed, the light over the horizon dimmed and soon disappeared. Night covered everything. The stars overhead shone even more brightly. So that was dusk instead of dawn? Wong asked. It is morning, but the sun doesn't always rise in the morning. That's what a chaotic era is like. Wong found the cold hard to take. It looks like the sun won't rise for a long time. He shivered and pointed to the blurry horizon. What makes you think that? There's no way to be certain. I told you this is a chaotic 
chaotic era. The follower turned to King Wen. May I have some dry fish? Absolutely not. King Wen's tone broke no disagreement. I barely have enough for myself. We must guarantee that I make it to Sao Ge, not you. As they spoke, Wong noticed the sky brightening over another part of the horizon. He couldn't be sure of the compass directions, but he was sure the direction this time was different from last time. The sky grew brighter, and soon the sun of this world rose. It was small and bluish in color, like a very bright moon. Wong still felt a bit of warmth, and could now see the landscape around him more clearly. But the day didn't last long. The sun traversed a shallow arc over the horizon, and soon set. Night and the bone-chilling cold once more settled over everything. The three travelers stopped in front of a dead tree. King Wen and follower took out their bronze swords to chop the tree into firewood, and Wong gathered the firewood into a pile. Follower took out a piece of flint and struck it against a blade until the sparks caught. The fire soon warmed the front of Wong's V-suit, but his back remained cold. We should burn some of the dehydrated bodies, Follower said. Then we'll have a roaring fire. Put that thought out of your mind. Only the tyrant King Zhou would engage in that kind of behavior. We've seen so many dehydrated bodies scattered along the road here. After the sun set, the air remained hot and damp. The three sweat-drenched travelers sat on the rock. Followers spoke with dismay. Traveling during a chaotic air is like walking through hell. I can't stand it anymore. Also, I haven't had anything to eat because you won't give me any dried fish, and you won't let me eat the dehydrated bodies. What? The only choice is to dehydrate you, King Wen said fanning himself with a piece of hide. You won't abandon me afterwards, will you? Of course not. I promise to bring you to Zhao Ge. Follower stripped off his sweat-soaked robe and lay down nude on the muddy earth. In the last glow from the sun, already below the horizon, Wong saw water oozing out of Follower's body. He knew that it was no longer sweat, all the water in his body was being discharged and squeezed out. 
The water coalesced into a few small rivulets in the mud. His body turned soft and lost its shape like a melting candle. Ten minutes later, all the water had been eliminated from his body. Follower was now a man-shaped piece of leather stretched out on the ground. His facial features had flattened and become indistinct. Is he dead? Wong asked. He remembered seeing such man-shaped pieces of hide scattered along the road. Some were torn and incomplete. He supposed they were the dehydrated bodies followers spoke of earlier as potential kindling. No, King Wen answered. He picked up follower's skin, brushed the mud and dust off, laid him out on the rock, and rolled him up like a balloon with its air let out. He'll recover soon enough. When we soak him in water, it's just like soaking dried mushrooms. Even his bones have turned soft? Yes. His skeleton has turned into dried fibers. This makes him easy to carry. In this world, can everyone be dehydrated and rehydrated? Of course. You can too. Otherwise, we could not survive the chaotic eras. King Wen handed the rolled-up follower to Wong. Carry him. If you abandon him on the road, he'll be burned or eaten. Wong accepted the skin, a light roll. He held it under his arm, and it didn't feel too strange. With Wong carrying the dehydrated follower and King Wen carrying the sand glass, the two continued their arduous journey. Like the previous few days, the progress of the sun in this world followed no pattern. After a long, frigid night, lasting several days' worth of time, a brief but scorching day might follow, and vice versa. The two relied on each other for survival. They lit fires to hold off the cold, and ducked into lakes to avoid the heat. At least the game sped up the progress of time. A month in game time might pass in half an hour. This made the journey through the chaotic era at least tolerable for Wong. One day, after a long night that lasted almost a week, as measured by the sand glass, King Wen suddenly shouted joyously as he pointed to the night sky. Flying stars! Two flying stars! Actually, Wong had already noticed the strange celestial bodies. They were bigger than stars and showed up as discs about the size of ping pong balls. They moved through the sky at a pace quick enough for the naked eye to detect the motion, but it was the first time two of them had appeared together. King Wen explained. When two flying stars appear, it means a stable era is about to begin. We've seen flying stars before. Yes, but only one at a time. Is two the most we'll see at once? No. Sometimes three will appear, but no more than that. If three flying stars appear, does... That herald an even better era? King Wen gave Wong a frightened look. What are you talking about? Three flying stars. Pray that such a thing never happens. King Wen turned out to be right. The yearned for stable era soon began. Sunrise and sunset began to follow a pattern. A day-night cycle began to stabilize around 18 hours. The orderly alternation of day and night made the weather warm and mild. How long does a stable era last? Wong asked. As short as a day, or as long as a century. No one can predict how long one will last. King Wen sat on the sand glass, lifting his head to gaze at the noonday sun. According to historical records, the Western Zhou Dynasty experienced a stable era lasting two centuries. How lucky to be born during such a time. Then how long does a chaotic era last? I already told you. Other than stable eras, all other times belong to chaotic eras. Each of them takes up the time not occupied by the other. So this is a world in which there are no patterns? Yes. Civilization can only develop in the mild climate of stable eras. Most of the time, humankind must collectively dehydrate and be stored. When a long, stable era arrives, they collectively revive through rehydration. Then they proceed to build and produce. How can you predict the arrival and duration of each stable era? Such a thing has never been done. When a stable era arrives, the 
the king makes a decision based on intuition as to whether to engage in mass rehydration. Often the people are revived, crops are planted, cities begin construction, life is just started, and then the stable era ends. Extreme cold and heat then destroy everything. Ping Wen now pointed at Wong, his eyes sparkling. Now you know the goal of this game. Use our intellect and understanding to analyze all phenomena until we can know the pattern of the sun's movement. The survival of civilization depends on it. Based on my observations, there is no pattern to the sun's movement at all. That's because you do not understand the fundamental nature of the world. And you do? Yes. This is why I'm going to Zhao Ge. I will present King Zhou with an accurate calendar. But I've seen no evidence on this trip that you can do such a thing. Predicting the sun's motion is only possible in Sao Gu, for that is where yin and yang meet. Only the lots cast there are accurate. The two continued on through the harsh conditions of another chaotic era, interrupted briefly by a short stable era, until they finally arrived in Sao Gu. Wong heard an unceasing roar that sounded like thunder. The sound was generated by the numerous giant pendulums that could be seen all over Zhao Ge, each tens of meters in height. The weight of each pendulum was a giant rock suspended from a thick rope tied to a bridge that stretched between the tops of two slender stone towers. All the pendulums were swinging as groups of soldiers in armor kept them in motion, chanting incomprehensibly. They rhythmically pulled ropes attached to the giant stone weights, adding to the pendulum's arcs as they slowed. Wong noticed that all the pendulums swung in step. From far away, the sight was awe-inducing. It was as though numerous giant clocks had been erected over the earth, or colossal abstract symbols had fallen from the sky. The giant pendulum surrounded an even more enormous pyramid, standing like a tall mountain in the dark night. This was King Zhou's palace. Wong followed King Wen into a low door at the base of the pyramid, before which a few soldiers patrolled in the darkness, noiseless as ghosts. The door led to a long, narrow, dark tunnel, going deep into the pyramid, with a few torches along the way. As they walked, King Wen spoke to Wong. During a chaotic era, the entire country is dehydrated. But King Zhou remains awake, a companion to the lifeless land. In order to survive during a chaotic era, one must live in thick-walled buildings like this one, as though one were living underground. It's the only way to avoid the extreme heat and cold. After a long time in the tunnel, they finally arrived at the Great Hall at the center of the pyramid. Actually, the hall was not that big and reminded Wong of a cave. The man sitting on a dais and draped with a party-colored hide was undoubtedly King Zhou. But what drew Wong's attention was a man dressed all in black. The black robe blended with the thick shadows in the Great Hall, and the pale white face seemed to float in air. This is Fu Si. King Zhou introduced the man in black to Wong and King Wen. He spoke as though Wong and King Wen had always been there while the man in black was the newcomer. He thinks that the sun is a temperamental god. When the god is awake, his moods are unpredictable, and thus we have a chaotic era. But when he's asleep, his breathing evens out, and thus we have a stable era. Fu Si suggested that I build those pendulums you see out there and keep them in constant motion. He claims that the pendulums can have a hypnotic effect on the sun god and cause him to sink into a long slumber. But we can all see that so far, the sun god remains awake, though from time to time he seems to nap briefly. King Zhou waved his hands and servants brought over a clay pot and set it down on the small stone table before Fu Si. Later, Wong found out that it was a pot of seasoned broth. 
Fu Sid sighed, lifted the pot, and drank in great gulps, the sound of his swallows echoing like the beating of a giant heart in the darkness. After he was halfway done with the contents, he poured the rest over his body. Then he threw down the pot and walked toward a large bronze cauldron suspended over a fire in the corner of the great hall. He climbed onto the edge of the cauldron and jumped in, stirring up a cloud of vapor. Ji Chang, sit down. King Zhou said, we'll eat in just a little while. He pointed to the cauldron. Foolish witchcraft. King Wen said, glancing contemptuously at the cauldron. What have you learned about the sun? King Zhou asked. Firelight flickered in his eyes. The sun is not a god. The sun is yang, and the night is yin. The world proceeds on the balance between yin and yang. Though we cannot control the process, we can predict it. King Wen took out his bronze sword and drew a yin-yang symbol on the floor, dimly lit by the fire. Then he carved the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching around the symbol, the whole composition resembling a calendar wheel. My king, this is the code of the universe. With it, I can present your dynasty with an accurate calendar. Ji Chan, I need to know when the next long, stable era will come. I will forecast it for you right now, King Wen said. He sat down in the middle of the yin-yang symbol. His legs curled under him. He raised his head to look up at the ceiling of the great hall, his gaze seeming to penetrate the thick stones of the pyramid until it reached the stars. The fingers of his two hands began a series of rapid, complex movements, like components of a calculating machine. In the silence, only the soup in the cauldron in the corner made any noise, boiling and bubbling as though the shaman being cooked within dream-talking in his sleep. King Wen stood up in the middle of the yin-yang symbol. With his face still lifted to the ceiling, he said, Next will be a chaotic era lasting 41 days. Then comes a five-day stable era. Thereafter, there will be a 23-day chaotic era, followed by an 18-day stable era. Then we'll have an eight-day chaotic era. But when this chaotic era is over, my king, the long, stable era you've been waiting for will begin. That stable era will last three years and nine months. The climate will be so mild that it'll be a golden age. You have to verify your initial predictions first. King Zhou said, his face expressionless. Wong heard a loud rumbling from above. The stone slab in the ceiling of the great hall slid open, revealing a square opening. Wong shifted his position and saw that the opening led to another tunnel going up through the center of the pyramid. At the end of the tunnel, he could see a few twinkling stars. Game time sped up. Every few seconds in real time, two soldiers flipped over the sand glass brought by King Wen, indicating the passing of eight hours in game time. The opening through the ceiling flickered with random lights. Once in a while, a ray of sunlight from the chaotic air was shot into the great hall. Sometimes the light was weak, like moonlight. Sometimes the light was very strong, and the incandescent white square cast against the ground glowed so brightly that the torches in the great hall paled in comparison. Wong continued to count the flipping of the sand glass. By the time it had been flipped 120 times or so, the appearance of the sunlight through the square opening became regular. The first of the predicted stable errors had arrived. After 15 more flips of the sand glass, the flickering light through the opening became patternless again, the start of another chaotic era. Another stable error followed, and another chaotic error. The starting times and durations of the various eras were not exactly as King Wen had predicted, but they were close. After the conclusion of yet another eight-day chaotic era, the long stable era he predicted began. Wong kept counting the flips of the sand glass. Twenty days passed, and 
the sunlight falling into the great hall maintained the precise rhythm. Game time slowed down to normal. King Zhou nodded at King Wen. I shall erect a monument for you. One even greater than this palace. King Wen bowed deeply. My king, awaken your dynasty and let it prosper. King Zhou stood up on the dais and opened his arms though he wanted to embrace the whole world. In a strange, otherworldly voice, he began to chant... Thank you so much for watching and again be sure to like and subscribe and yeah stay safe everyone